Welcome everyone to Finance with JCL. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to share with you a detailed look at all of my UK portfolio holdings. And the last I did this was in January, so we've had a good few months since that update. So I wanted to update you on the changes and the progress. And everything that you see here is part of the £1 million investment portfolio challenge it all feeds into that and if you want to say more about that i'll leave a link uh, up above for you to click into so let's get right into it so i've got the outline of a pie chart here and i'm just going to take you through starting from the largest position in terms of monetary value all the way through to the smallest i'm going to show the the gain or loss in each case and if you want to see more like this, please consider subscribing because I'll show you my portfolio progress and also individual stock reviews if you're into that sort of thing. So the largest holding, which is around about a quarter of the UK portfolio, is actually FTSE 100 index tracker. So in this pie chart, the index trackers will be blue and you can see the total overall gain on that is 22% and it's six percentage points up since the last update. So that's a reasonable number of percentage points up in uh, four or five months. And the story here is I used to chip in monthly to the tracker and I stopped that uh, just over a year ago when I wanted to be more, have a more active element of my investment portfolio. So I'm retaining that kind of passive part, um, but I have been a bit more active recently. Second up is Aviva. Now Aviva was kind of right on the other side of the pie chart before. I've actually averaged up into that twice since my original purchase last year, including once since the last update. I'm now about a third up on the position, including seven percentage points up uh, since the last update. Uh, and this section's in green and all my kind of financial, you know, bank insurance, business services stuff, that's all finance related is gonna be in green because that is a big part of the portfolio. If you want to know more about Aviva, I did do a video on that last year. So I'll put up a link to that. So next up, now this one's in orange, has a, a very small number of uh, mutual funds. They're in orange. And this has been my first joiner to the 150% club. I bought this for seven or eight years ago. And it's been up 19 percentage points since last time. So we're now up 155%. And it's a good chunk as well. Uh, the third biggest position and the fourth biggest position is another fund which has just joined the 100 club being up 10 percentage points since last update so it's really good progress here and that one i've actually owned for pretty much exactly seven years so it's been going up about ten and a half percent a year since i got it on a compound annual growth rate basis um, and then we're on to the UK index, so that's up 8 percentage points. Uh, and I've trimmed that a little bit since the last update, because I was quite UK index heavy. And the final, I think this is the final index tracker, FTSE 250, that's up 44% uh, plus 7 since last time. So what you'll observe here is that around about, if you take the Aviva one out, because that's to actively picked, half the portfolio is kind of what I might call passive investing which is someone else has picked the companies for me. Um, index in most cases, but there are a couple of funds there as well. So we now get into the actual active stock picks, which is what I've been growing as I've been improving my knowledge over the last uh, couple of years. But Unilever is down six percentage points. It's a 95% overall gain, which is excellent. Um, but it is just down six it has dropped out of the 100 percent club but uh, i'm expecting that to be back now k3 capital well, I, again i've made a video on this one it's one of my favorite stocks and i have averaged up into this since the last detailed review i think it's a great company with an excellent future and i'm up 62 percent i'd actually be up over 100 percent on this now had i not averaged up but i'm happy that i did because it's improved my uh, portfolio size and my gain because it's gone up since i averaged up so 62% on that in about six or seven months. So absolutely delighted. And then Legal in general, another insurance company, uh, up a third on that. Nice dividend and up six percentage points since the last update. So just making nice steady progress. 
Uh, and shell dropped a little bit, so around about level on that. Um, I've held it for several years, but the I think the stock's a bit depressed at the moment, around about £13. And I think as things improve, it should hopefully go back up to about 20 Which is Telecom, or BT. Really big mover in the last four or five months, up 19 points. So I'm almost up 50% on that one, and I think that has got quite a way to go still. City London Investment Group, another big mover, uh, 24 points up uh, effectively this year. So 37% up on that. It's got a very nice dividend that comes through as well. And Direct Line, bit of a faller, but still up 16%. And yeah, nice dividend that comes through on that one. And you can see here we're around about, uh, I think this is now 83% of the monetary value of the holdings and everything in total total return is up so far so the vast majority of the portfolio is performing um, which is good because rule one for Warren Buffett is don't lose money however we now get to the first loss uh, I say loss um, one that's down it's only down two percent and it's a brand new position and I've bought uh, this one for the seven point something percent dividend so I'm not sure whether it's two percent down because you know things fluctuate uh, in the short term invest tech now this one last year was at about 0.3 of book value. So I, I, I took a small position and looking at it now, which I'll take a large one, of course, but up 61 points since uh, the start of the year. That's 86% gain on that one. So that, that is performing really well. If it carries on, that should well be joining the 100% club quite soon. Boohoo. Now Boohoo, I'm a little bit disappointed with that it's 7% down because I had the opportunity to buy it at a much cheaper price than I bought it at eventually. And this is a new one, by the way, since the update at the start of the year. And because I was uh, shilly shanning a bit, a little bit indecisive, I actually ended up buying it at a higher price than I could have done. I really, if I was being ruthless about it, it should be up. Another big mover, Duke Royalty. It's a little bit more of a speculative play, this one, alternative financing company. It's up 36 points now since last time, so almost 50% up. But it's quite a small position. Plus 500, sort of treading water, really. And then another one, Fever Tree. So up 17% overall, which uh, in about a year, or well, just under a year, is, is perfectly respectable. But this one I should have known about. Fever Tree has been my favourite tonic for my gin and tonics for, for a few years. And I had the opportunity to buy it at about £14. I dithered, I didn't execute, and then it jumped up to about £20 within a few days following their results last year, if, if memory serves. So again, I could have got this one at a lower price, and it's a company that I knew well and it's a high quality product. So I think I've got a lesson here. Fever Tree, uh, Boohoo, if I'd acted more decisively, I'd be on much bigger gains. And in fact, Aviva, the original position, if I'd just bought a much bigger position originally, I'd be up, um, I think, sort of 80 to 100% now. I'd averaged up twice. So again, a bit more sort of decisive, and I could be sitting on bigger gains here. So Avast, that's dropped from level to minus 13%. Uh, I think it's got a great long term future. But again, I've been using this product for. I think about 15 years, so I knew about this, this company. And yet I did not buy the stock years ago when it was much, much lower than it is now. Missed opportunity, but these are all learning. You can't hit everything. You can't get the best time on everything. But you can do is gain experience. Uh, Hargreaves lands down, so yeah, that's up a little bit, but it's quite a small position. One of the final funds here, a very small position in this one. It's up 43% or 21 points. As and I've had it for about six months. Delighted with that. Now, Argo Blockchain. I think a few of you have probably heard of this one. It's kind of mentioned on YouTube by a few of the UK YouTubers, and it's a cryptocurrency miner. Now, this one's in black as well, because it was actually in the 100% club. I actually bought this one for one of uh, one of my friends. They had a milestone birthday, so I thought, I'll buy you a stock. I sort of uh, bought by myself some as well. And it's been very, very volatile in terms of price. It was up well over 100% at one point, dropped back down to 38%. But, you know, it's 38% up in less than six months. Can't complain with that. And as uh, things like Bitcoin potentially become more valuable in terms of the price people are willing to pay, 
then this company would become more valuable. A bit of a speculative play, which is why it's a very minuscule position and a new position since last update. Uh, yeah, this one's not great. Big mistake buying this. I rushed. I didn't do the usual diligence I do, and it's not the sort of company I normally buy, great and gold. And then last but not least, uh, we touched on this one last time, a uh, fund were made a mistake and I followed the fund man the star fund manager and it's like tanked basically. So there we have it. That is the UK part of my one million challenge portfolio. So the overall the vast majority of holdings there are in the positive. The biggest holdings of the 80 going to the first 83% of the value is all in positive. So I'm really happy with that. And there's some big numbers there. It's not just uh, some big numbers, things are moving. There are lots of stocks that are going up. Look at Duke Royalty, Investec, City of London, BT. K3 has been, but I averaged up, um, which is why it's only plus six there. So there's a lot of things that are that are motoring. And it's quite interesting there. The, the index track is perhaps a dragging the performance back a little bit. That the, the best performance, most of them are, are the mutual funds, the orange. I picked some good ones there, and the green, which is actually the kind of financial related uh, companies. First of all, overall, if you aggregate all of that, that's 34% up. That's five percentage points up since the start of the year. So I'm looking for 6.66% minimum, and then 10% stretch target per year for the million pound challenge. Line for that stretch target if we're five points up or we're in May. And then yeah, Greatland Gold is the worst mover, and then Investec is the star performer since the last update at the start of the year. The detailed update up 61 points. Now, if you're looking to buy UK stocks and you're based in the UK, I can hook you up with a free share that will be worth up to potentially £200. And that is if you use my free trade link in the description below. That's if you're not a customer, then yeah, there's a potential free share there up to £200. I would uh, benefit from that as well, so uh, I'd appreciate any uh, any support through that method. And then a shout out to my VIP patron supporter. I can hook you up with my budgeting spreadsheet if you become a patron, which um, is one of the added benefits. We can talk directly and then we'll have a bit more discussion and also to support the channel. So finally, just for those of you that are new investors, I always like to refer to the conditions for success at the end of each video, which is the steps I think you need to go through, the process of investing, and this one here comes towards the end there with the yellow star, which is tracking. So this is kind of monitoring performance, tracking how things are doing and try to understand your portfolio, good decisions that you made and decisions you could have made better. So being more decisive in your buying, um, rushing research, for example, these are things that uh, could be improved. So. I am really pleased that you've joined me. And if you've managed to make it to the end, drop a comment below just so I know you've watched it to the end. I appreciate it. And thanks for your time. I'll, I'll catch you on the next one. And if you do like this kind of update, do do let me know below because it takes a bit of time to pull the figures together and um, work it all through. But if you do like it, uh, I'd appreciate it. Or in fact, if you don't like it as well, do share your feedback. So thanks very much. And I'll see you next time.